Hello, it's Frank. Um, I wanted to make this for mostly for Tanya uh, to sort of go over some workflow uh, that I have come up with recently, uh, mostly for coming up with chord progressions. So uh, I'm going to bring up a right now I've got open uh, Sonar X1 and I'm going to bring up a program called Magic Circle. So I'm going to type that in here. And this is free software, Magic Circle. You can download it uh, if you search for it on Google. And it uh, looks like this. And there are some options uh, you can I, I don't remember on the, off the top of my head, but there's some options for changing what is displayed. But what this is doing is it is listening to the MIDI channel, and uh, when I play a chord, uh, it says, oh, there's a C and an E and a G, and right now the patch I've got playing is a solo patch, so unfortunately it's it's only playing one note at a time. I'm playing a chord, playing another chord, it says, oh, that's an F, plays another chord, oh, that's a G. So I can use this to go through some sheet music and say it's uh, Bach's Prelude. If I play the chord, oh, it says, oh, that's a C. So I can write that down and go to the next chord. If I can play it, play all those at the same time, and oh, that's a D minor 7. So I can put that, write that down. And I can go through the whole piece this way. Uh, I'm not going to do that uh, to keep this a little shorter. Oh, that's a G7. So, pretty quickly, I can go through the whole piece, get all the chords, wonderful. Now that I've written them down, I hit escape to kill the magic uh, circle program. Um, now I can bring up what's, what I've got called Tune Smithy 3. This one is not free. It costs, I think, something like 10 or $15. And there's a 30-day free trial um, so you can play with it for 30 days for free. The user interface to Toonsmithy is mind-boggling um, to be as kind as possible. Uh, it is, it, it's like the guy is doing everything conceivably possible musically and embedding it into some software and the user interface is just, it goes on to infinity, it's just, anyways, um, what, the reason why I had bought it to begin with was they have a, a program called uh, Fractal Toonsmithy, so they've got a Fractal Composer, um, but I'm not using it that way right now, I'm just using it to say, oh, okay, let's plug in these uh, chords and have you generate um, some uh, MIDI file um, and maybe introduce arpeggios and stuff like that and make it interesting. So uh, when I opened it up, well, we'll just use what, what I already had. No, we won't. We'll, we'll type in something. Okay, so let's clear this out. Let's type in a chord progression, C. D minor 7, D M7, and G7. So I'll zoom in on this. Let's see here. Tight. No, kind of hard to see. Okay. So here I've typed in um, uh, right here C, D minor 7, G7. And then down below it, it's got some rhythm thing that says uh, count, and then he's got some special codes for how, how much of an introduction count, and then when you start the music, 
what volume, how many beats to give the first chord, change the volume for the next chord, change the volume again. These are things that I typed in. And actually this was a, uh, a four chord per measure. So let's just say we want C, D minor, G7, uh, and then back to C again. And we can also, if we want to change uh, inversions, you can hit like the period or the tilde and that will give you first inversion upward. Tilde gives you first inversion downward. And he documents all of this in, in the help, which is there's a little square up here for getting help. Um, okay, so here we've got four chords and now let's navigate through the nightmare of uh, windows. What happens is you click on a feature and it opens up a new window. And then here there's a save MIDI file. Okay, so let's not save it on whatever default file I had out there. Let's just change the name to YY. Okay, save. Uh, hold on. Before we save that, let's do some arpeggios if, if we can figure it out. No, I can't figure it out. Okay, I'm just going to... There is an arpeggio feature in here, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, okay, so now let's go back to Sonar X1, import the MIDI file. So we're going to go find where I had saved that file. And I'll zoom out the uh, camera in a moment. Yes, things are not going so well. There we go. Okay, so here we have, it's just playing regular chords. Um, it did the C, the D minor 7, and I think I had applied an inversion to some of these chords. Let's look. Yes, the G7, the D minor 7 is supposed to be inverted up by one inversion, and the G7 should be inverted down by one inversion. Uh, so the, the G minor is starting on the B down here in the bass clef and going up. The D minor 7, I don't have a good answer for that. It looks like it didn't quite get it. Oh, let's zoom this out wide, wide, wide. Sorry, couldn't see any of that. So there. Okay, and that's it. That's that's all I wanted to show you really was that uh, these two tools, the uh, Magic Circle and then the Tune Smithy, are interesting tools. They uh, provide uh, some workflow. Um, sure, it's generating a MIDI file, and the, the arpeggios can get very interesting. It's all very robotic sounding. Um, but it is a means of taking a piece that sounds beautiful and learning what the chords are and then being able to actually do stuff with that. So um, that's what I'm playing around with right now. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.